I didn't even know I was going to say it myself. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much for the invitation to um, uh, be here today. Uh, essentially, what Tony's asked me to talk about was uh, a really uh, more or less an update brief, I suppose you'd call it, on where some of our collaborative research is at the moment in a, in a major collaborative exercise in climate change adaptation. Um, Is that okay? Yeah, I, I normally don't need a microphone, but um, so w w here I, I just want to refer to the South East Queensland uh, Climate Adaptation Research Initiative, uh, whose acronym we pronounce as SCARY. Uh, it's a collaboration between CSIRO, uh, University of Queensland, University of Sunshine Coast, and Griffith University. Uh, it's funded from um, Australian government uh, funds, Queensland uh, Smart State money and uh, CSIRO flagship. Um, essentially, um, we're across a number of sectors. CSIRO is essentially looking at uh, climate change adaptation with respect to agriculture, uh, energy and physical infrastructure, or at least the, the higher end of physical infrastructure, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, University of Queensland is looking at adaptation in terms of biodiversity. Uh, University of Sunshine Coast is looking at adaptive capacity. Uh, and Griffith is looking at a broad umbrella under the heading of uh, human settlements. Um, in the human settlement uh, area, we're looking at five sectors, or if you like. Uh, urban planning and management, emergency management, uh, human health, coastal management, and physical infrastructure insofar as it relates to local government responsibilities. And for the interstate visitors, that's a significant lesser uh, degree of responsibility uh, in Queensland to what you might be thinking about because so much of the infrastructure has been uh, corporatised um, by the state government in the last couple of years, particularly um, uh, water and uh, sewerage uh, and certainly electricity. So we're looking at uh, South East Queensland, uh, and this is a challenge in itself. Um, this is covered by a formal planning uh, process. Uh, in fact, it's one of the only statutory, planning, uh, statutory regional planning processes in Australia. Uh, and that's got significant implications, being a statutory plan, because it's then binding on all local governments. Uh, it's binding on every state agency, in fact, uh, working in that territory, and then obviously on the private sector. Uh, so it, it comes from a, a, an act of parliament and the plan itself, uh, the regional plan can only be changed by parliament. Uh, so there's no brown paper bags being left on uh, Minister for Planning um, uh, desk anymore, which was what Queensland experienced in the past. Um, so the question then is to deal with climate change adaptation for this large region. And I should also add, th this is one of the largest formal planning regions in the world where there's an attempt to do regional planning. So that in itself is, a, is, a, is another challenge. The objectives of the human, and I'm only, sorry, I'm only going to deal with the human settlement component. Um, I, I, I've only got 15 minutes and even then I, I can't do justice to this, but I'm just going to give you an update of where we've come from and where we are now. So. I shan't waste time reading these, but y you can see that the objectives of human settlement uh, work is to look at the things like what, what's a challenge for adaptation, what are the barriers, how do we overcome those, uh, and importantly, w throughout the whole scary um, community, we are starting now, even though we're only halfway through the process of a three-year project, we're starting now to look at how we synthesise across sectors and across the artificial institutions. Um, I mean, we're, we're trying to address the end point now, 18 months uh, out. Uh, and that's, that in itself is a big challenge for us, to get across those uh, artificial disciplines and professions uh, that are embedded uh, into this project. Now, from a planning perspective, uh, there's two major issues that I, I want to raise in, the term, in terms of the nature of climate change that challenge us. The, the first one is that climate change addresses very long temporal horizons. Uh, and when you think about planning, um, it goes from planning for a subdivision that will be on the ground assuming it gets through the normal development assessment processes within six months, uh, right through to the strategic planning end. So obviously 
you, you can see to what end of the planning uh, spectrum that this research uh, is focused. The other issue is how in a planning process do we, do we deal with the uncertainty and the changing and evolving nature of climate science. Um, that again uh, presents or has presented some challenges uh, to us in this research as it would uh, in the implementation of planning itself. So dealing with this long-term temporal scale, as I said, using South East Queensland as a case study, and obviously one of the reasons why we picked South East Queensland is not just because we live there, but it's one of the six most vulnerable regions identified in earlier work um, that, that was vulnerable to climate change, and it's also the fastest growing metropolitan region in Australia. Metropolitan region. So in that sense, uh, and I'm oh, sorry, there's a third reason, uh, the bulk of the population is, is sitting precariously or living precariously along a very narrow coastal plain at the moment. Uh, and through this statutory planning process, there, there are policies and attempts to skew future population growth away from the coast inland through a western corridor. So it's coming through this regional plan, 2009-2031. So this is typical of the time frames of strategic planning, um, strategic land use planning that is. So we're dealing with something like a 20 year time frame. And that, and that in itself is significant enough. It's, I would argue as a planner, it's probably been given lip service to in the past, these time scales that we try to do strategic plans uh, over. Uh, but when they become statutory and there's so many other things hanging off them, it, it gives it a whole new dimension. For example, um, every, every budget commitment of the state government and all its agencies must now be aligned to the policies in this plan. In fact, you can't have a policy in this plan unless, unless it's funded. I mean, that, that is something quite significant, as some of you would know from other states, where they have these plans, but there's actually no commitment to implement them. So there is a commitment here, uh, and uh, I mean, certainly it can change with political, uh, changing political priorities, but at least the link is now made between budgets, uh, infrastructure commitments, and planning policy, or the other way around, if you want to put it that way. So just let me put you in, in the picture here uh, uh, with these two questions. Where were you folks 20 years ago? And what do you remember at that time? There's a couple of you in this room, you probably weren't even born 20 years ago. Um, but the rest of us were. Well, what happened 20 years ago? Well, Bob Hawke was our Prime Minister. This is a trip down memory lane, isn't it? Um, in terms of natural uh, hazards uh, and disasters emanating, the Newcastle earthquake occurred in uh, 89. The Berlin Wall came tearing down and Nelson Mandela was just released from prison. That was 20 years ago. So what has happened in that 20 year time frame? Now why am I taking you through this? Because these are the sorts of things and events and circumstances that will happen in the same time frame that this regional plan is trying to get across from 2009 to 2031. And we've got to try and put policies in there to deal with management of a changing and evolving landscape over that time frame. So let's just, th let's just quickly look at 20 years. Well, 20 years ago, the World Wide Web was launched. It looks like it's been with us forever, but no, 20 years ago. Um, we had this famous Earth Summit, 1992. And yeah, we had a UN framework for a uh, convention on climate change. <laughs> Didn't get very far, did we, in 20 years? Ros Kelly was the sports minister. Uh, Dolly, first cloned animal. The great North American uh, Ice, uh, ice storm closed down the entire uh, North American continent uh, for, for days. Sydney Olympics occurred in that time frame. September 11 um, World Trade Center attacks, uh, collapse of ANSET, death of Pope Paul, uh, sorry, Pope John Paul II. Peter Beatty resigned in that period. There's some major events here, both nationally and internationally. So. How do we try to anticipate this? What, what, what mechanisms can we take on board if we're going to do a strategic plan that's 20 years out? Well, what we decided to do here is a, is a scenario planning approach um, to deal with this uncertainty and to deal with this imprecise information that's uh, available to us. 
and I'll just go side